you have a schedule during the work week. And also it's kind of guilt free. Like, even though like I work from home now, but I'm still working. Like I am supposed to be here. Even if I'm going upstairs to get coffee, I don't feel like a real piece of shit, but during the weekends, if like I'm supposed to be at soccer practice or something and I don't want to go or my daughter's like, hey, I want to play duck, duck, goose for the next 30 minutes. If I don't do it, I feel bad. But during, if you ask me that on a Wednesday, sorry, kiddo, I got to pay the bill somehow. <laughs> The people have asked for it. Moms, dads, those are my people. Those are Nikki, the goods people. You've been asking for it. You've been in my DMs. You've been in my mentions. Everybody's been saying, hey, Nikki, help me out with my kids. Help me out with those damn kids. Well, I got to say, here is the People's Dads podcast. I have given it to you. So there's only one thing left to say, and that's what can I say except you're welcome. I have done it. I have done it. And for the first time ever, I think this is the first time ever, I brought the bloodline into my show because right here, right now is a very special guest because I figured if there's going to be someone talking about like parenthood and we're going to be kicking this things off, right? I figured why not have the guy who came from these same parents? So right now, this is an exclusive for all you. My last name's not good, you idiots. Okay. So this is an exclusive <laughs> right now. I got my big bro. He's three years older. I got Joe Buono. The big bro of Nikki the Good, big bro. How you doing? What's going on, man? Uh, I guess I'm. I guess I'm Joey the Good for purposes of this uh, podcast. Guess so, man. Keep the government names under wraps. So how how are things going with the kiddos? You know, obviously I know who your kids are, but why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what you got going in the house? Like, who do you got? You, do you have boys? Do you have girls? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a girl dad, two girls. Uh, one five-year-old, one two-year-old, and uh, like most parents, excited to get the work week back and running here again on a Monday. Survived another weekend, survived another weekend of, of birthday parties and and crayons and picking up markers and cleaning just to clean again and, you know, the usual. And that's where we're going to get into a little bit here. So uh, a little behind the scenes stuff. So I, I locked in my brother here. It was really difficult to book him. He's a busy guy, you know, but he was like, hey, I'm not feeling that good. And I was like, great, that's perfect because it's on brand, right? Because part of the reason I want to do this is because I see meme culture with parenting has not caught up with the people that are doing the damn shows. Okay, the memes are funny. I, I, I scroll the reels. I'm laughing my ass off. I share with my wife who's upstairs embarrassed at the moment, but the people that are doing the shows, it's just not that great, man. It's kind of a little bit of a snooze fest. I listened to some woman explain the word punishment for about 15 minutes today as if that was going to help me out. In fact, that was the punishment. I punished myself, but I want to get into what my brother just said here the weekend. And I want to kick it off because this has been the number one thing that I've been talking about on Twitter. I've been tweeting about it every single Saturday morning with getting my Iron Man suit on ready to go. Joe, I, I want to talk about the this, just what's going on right now in our lives and how the weekend and the weekday, the week, the work week have completely just done a 180 on each other ever since pre-kids and now with kids. Talk to me about the hell that is the weekend for you. You know, like how we used to have Monday mornings and people used to say, oh, how was your weekend? And people go, oh, it was too fast. It went by too fast. Too I, fast, I never say man. that. I never say that. Now I say that about a work week. How was the work right. week? It went, went by too fast. Those five days were, were not long enough because the five days of the work week, they give me structure. They give me time to myself. I get to interact with other adults. I yeah. get to have a cup of coffee go downstairs for a snack, take a walk, come back. That's all possible during the work week. During the weekend, my schedule does not exist. We just live for the girls. And I look forward to the birthday party. Some of these parents do the drop-off thing where they like drop their kids off and then go back to the house and then come back an hour and a half later. Later, I stay all the time because it's my only interaction with people yeah. on the weekend would be actually waiting for a birthday party to, to conclude. Yeah, we and we like to steal the show at those. Like, listen, that too. my brother's a little under the weather right now, but he's a showman himself. Um, we definitely like to show. Yeah, we like to hold court, man. Like these, these are the only adults I'm going to be seeing. And I'll also say that there's just 
there's something about the fact that you have a schedule during the work week. And also it's kind of guilt free. Like, even though like I work from home now, but I'm still working. Like I'm supposed to be here. Right. So it's the only time where I'm like away from my kids that I actually don't feel guilty about what I'm doing at the moment. Like, even if I'm going upstairs to get coffee, I don't feel like a real piece of shit. But during the weekends, if like I'm supposed to be at soccer practice or something and I don't want to go or my daughter's like, hey, I want to play duck, duck, goose for the next 30 minutes. If I don't do it, I feel bad. But during if you ask me that on a Wednesday, sorry, kiddo, I got to pay the bill somehow, (laughs) you know? No, I know. I know exactly what you mean. And and I'll tell you what, like the weekends themselves, I can't even decompress for my moment. Let's say pretend that there's a moment where both kids are either not around the house or they're just occupying themselves. I have difficulty just kind of vegging out. Maybe they will come a time when they're older, but like you have a nice big TV in your living room. I have one. And I, I, I never put it on. I, I never sit in front of a television and watch like the players championship yesterday or a day baseball game it never will happen anymore. And, and, and it just, it's all on the go. I'm watching things on my, on my iPhone eight, which I need an upgrade for or watching things on my laptop while I'm trying to cook microwave chicken nuggets and French fries. I'm trying to watch NFL football on the red zone. That, that is my weekend. Even Sundays during the football season, Nick, I, you, ne- you never watch a game until eight o'clock at night. Maybe Sunday night football. I'll watch it interrupted. And you're one, fucking the gassed game, the four too. O'clock game? Like you're gassed though. Like that eight twenty game, man, if it stinks, I'm out like a light. Like I don't even make it to halftime. Like I better have a fantasy player in that thing. The giants better be good at competing. Cause there's just no chance I'm going to make it up. And it's funny that you mentioned that you have an iPhone eight. Cause I guarantee you, if you didn't have kids, you'd have the top of the line. Oh, it's I have just to that 15. you're like, I don't have time right now to go get this. Like if it's between me having like two seconds to myself or conducting this errand, which I can go and make my life better by getting a phone. No, fuck that. I'm going to sit here right now and just be alone in my own brain. I think that's a lot. That's why the weekend is so tough, man. It's because there is no stopping. And here's another thing I want to get your take on big bro. If we have two kids now, I think that's really where it starts to really suck because when you have only one, correct me if I'm wrong here, you can do the shifts. You know, you could even be like, I remember, you know, with, with my, when when I had my daughter, right? Like I have, I have a daughter and a son, right? For any of you new listeners out there, brother, right? (laughs) For any of you new listeners out there, I have a daughter and a son. My daughter's five. My son's one. When we just had the, my, my, my daughter, it was easy. It's like, Oh, you, you take, I'll take them all day. Saturday. You take them all day. Sunday. I'll watch football all day. Now you can't do that. It's impossible. Yeah. Or if one has something else going on and one parent takes one out, that doesn't mean they're going to take both. Cause then you're putting that parent at a disadvantage and just say, Oh, you're going to take both the kids out for the afternoon. You are both going to go to the park for the next two and a half hours. And I can sit back and do what I want. That's never going to happen unless you're- you want to pay for it on the back end. Yes. So generally your choices are either you're going to go and do the whole family thing, or you're going to have to sit back and, and be most likely with your youngest one in the house all day, which I know yours is, you know, just a little over one is, is absolutely brutal. Just kind of hovering around them, watching them as they kind of go and try to learn how to walk and stand and touch. This was my other question. This was my other question. Okay. We love our kids equally, equally, right? We love them equally right now. It's the weekend, right? Would you rather for an hour and a half or two hours, let's say, Hey, who's watching the younger one? Who's watching the older one? And which is a better one to watch? Mm. You know what? They're both great by themselves. Good right answer. Now, they're both really good by themselves. When they get together, um, you know, I just thought, you know, two two girls, they'll play at the princess castle. They'll play dress up. You don't got to worry about all this fighting. That would be the case with boys and, and brothers. Uh, they, they fight all the time and they antagonize each other and they get on each other. So as long as you can keep them separate, they're OK. Uh, but of course, the five year old can completely zone out on goldfish and pirates booty and, and watch shows for uh, hours on end and don't have to worry about anything. While, you know, the two year old, you know, will will occupy herself for a while, but then it'll come a time where she wants daddy to do something with her and come on and play and you can't turn it down. And you have, you have to get, you have to shut off whatever you were doing and, and uh, get, get to daddy business. It's the truth. Like mine, like in my, not mine, my son, your nephew, he has literally kept me like in a closet, like just 
going back and forth in the pantry for an hour and a half. Like to people that are listening to this, if you're listening to this and you're not a parent, that's the facts, Brack. It's that song. It's okay? that uh, scene from The Sopranos when uh, you know Vito is in Vermont or whatever, and he's got he's trying to become like a regular citizen and get a real job, and he's he, he's working for a while, and he keeps on looking at his watch, and it's just like five minutes are passing by. He thinks he's working all day, and it's like five minutes are gone. That's how that's it is what sometimes it is, watching man. a kid. You're literally looking at the clock, and you break down your head into these different segments, and going like, "Can I get to lunchtime? Because I'm going to enjoy that." Yes. I'm gonna enjoy making myself a sandwich and then can i get to like this time and i'm gonna get myself a coffee at 3 30 and i'll kind of enjoy that and then can we get to dinner and just these little breaks little two hour intervals uh in between the day to get you to the point until everyone's asleep finally before moving into kind of the next section here i want to ask you a question what because you just mentioned that what is the craziest like I guess like game or random ass thing you've thought of to entertain them like of recently. Like I, I know for a fact that I was in the pantry and I stuffed every single goldfish like bag into the side of the pantry. Cause there's these little slits like in between like where like the pantry storage container is. I put like 20 of them and my son just grabbed all 20. And every time that he would take one out, I come from behind him and just keep put loading them up. I did that for a half an hour, a half an hour. I'm almost 40 and that's what I'm doing. Like people are watching the tournament. I'm on Twitter and I'm like, right. how are these people watching all of these shows right now? I can't move. I'm in this pantry with a broom and fucking goldfish and Oreos and all this other shit. I'm in a, I'm literally in a bomb shelter right now. And I just don't understand why when I refresh my phone, people are able to watch a television. You got uh, I, I no, you're exactly right. And, uh, you know, no, maybe some, some of the wives and the moms do this, but generally I feel like the goofy games and stuff, that's like the dad job, It is, you know, just course. come up with these the like, patriarchy that maybe. don't make sense. And, um, you know, they have like this, um, uh, Disney puzzle of all the different, like Mickey Mouse clubhouse. And like, we play the game where we hide them. And the, and the thing is, if I hide them really, really good, I could buy myself 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Of freedom so they go run off into one room all right dad's gonna hide them and i go what do you want low medium or high and they go i want high you want super hard yeah super hard and then i, I hide them and you know it'll take them 10 to 15 minutes to find them and that's a bit of a break um i play that game with them yesterday i got just the laundry basket and we had a couple of bouncy balls and we were playing like trying to play basketball with them or i was blocking their shots for a while and keeping them happy like that so yeah you just have to come up with stuff and sometimes you're entertaining yourself while you're doing it but and this is the stuff that like, listen, like, hey, to the moms out there that are going to listen. And I know you're out there because I know you're all in all Nikki's mentions, you know, because everybody knows Nikki's an old super dad over here. But listen, that's a patriarchy thing. And, you know, you need to start appreciating us for our brains, thinking of all that random stuff, because I don't see anyone else picking up the slack there. We're the ones that come up with those dopey <laughs> games and do all that shit, you know? Like, damn. Anyway, there was a there was a Go there's ahead. a book that I actually purchased a couple of Christmases ago. It's called The Horizontal Parent. Sounds exciting. It's about it all about? of the it's about all of these uh, games you can play where you get to essentially like lie down. Oh, and then the yeah. kids do things that. around them. So like one is you like one is you lie back, you lie on your back and they play like Sleeping Beauty with you where they bring all their little stuffed animals and they give you a kiss and you have to guess which one gave you the kiss. And obviously, you know which one it is or you peek and it just keeps on going. Another one is where they have to draw mom or dad. So you just lay on the couch and close your eyes and then they try to draw you like, you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Or they have to make you into a taco or there's a game called, you know, what's on your butt where you just lay down flat and they take some random object from the from the house and they put it on your butt and you have to guess what it is. So this is a brilliant book and uh, it allows you to kind of lay either on your back or on your belly or on your side uh, for five to 10 minute intervals over and over again. So I like that. And this is the last thing I'll say before I move into our next segment is that. The only thing I don't like about that is the explaining part. Because sometimes, man, if they don't get it, it's like, okay, <laughs> I just want to fucking move on here. I don't want to play this anymore. But then they're invested. And they're like, no, you said we're playing this game. Yeah. And then you I, end I'll up tell just you making this. up your own rules. You just make what, it up your own and, rules. And what's on the butt is hard. Like, I actually find that's a degree of difficulty, you know, sometimes for me. You know, you look around the room and you would think you'd be able to tell that object. But most times uh, I come up empty and the game must go on. 
All right. So this, so the next segment that I'm going to get into, it's, it's kind of, I kind of like this as like the cries for help. It's like where parents go to vent. So for me, it is Twitter. Like I'm on Twitter all day long and there's just a barrage of parents out there. And so I, I pulled up two tweets here. One is from a good friend of the show. He doesn't know the show exists yet, but he will know it when I put this damn thing out from Clem over at Barstool, my old coworker uh, at the Clem report. So he said, this was today. I just found out my kids have a half day from school on the first day of March Madness. We touched a little bit upon this, but this is what I want people to understand. This is why I'm doing this show is because all of those like uh, mentorship, parenting, YouTube channels, they ain't going to be talking about the fact that you hate your life because you're going to have to sit there. And there's probably a chance you're not going to be able to lock in on March Madness for half the day when you were probably thinking for a good month. That you had this in the bag. And now guess what? The first day when all your friends are tweeting, when everyone's talking about it, when it's the talk of the town is trending everywhere, you ain't going to be trending, brother. You're going to be watching Bluey. What do you got for me, Joe? What is this? Is this like a real thing? Talk to the people. I feel like that's like the example of like um, like federal holidays now for me in that um, like we have a nanny. We love our nanny. But in our contract with her that we signed, she got off all the bank holidays. So those are all the days that I used to look forward to that would have yeah. been like the middle of the week or early, like the three-day weekend, Columbus Day, President's Day, Veterans Day, that I don't have off. Well, I'm off from work, right. but I'm actually now watching the kid. And that's exactly. kind of feels like what happened to Clem in this situation is, you know, he had kind of banked for the fact that he'd be by himself and now he's entertaining them and they're going to come home right at the time around tip-off of the first games and uh, he probably won't be able to uh, move them along until uh, sometime in the late evening. And I want to explain this to the people out there that if you come across this and you don't have kids, right? Or if you or if you have one kid, because like, I like to say, if you got one, you got none. Okay. If you got one, you got none. That's how friggin' easy that shit is. That's a joke. <laughs> okay. What I'll say is this, is that I know you think you can watch the game. I know you're listening to me right now saying, no, I could figure out. No, you can't. You're not going to be able to watch the games. If you have kids that are functional and they have things that they want and they understand, I want this, I want that. You are going to sacrifice watching March, March Madness for having some level of sanity and peace. You would rather that than have to deal with whatever you have to deal with if you get, if your show is on the TV. I have won zero arguments, zero arguments with my daughter about I want to watch this show. Because it's just, they will beat you down into submission. That's what they do. Especially if you got daughters. Like, I can't say no for shit. It's impossible. I don't say no at all. So Clem knows, like right here, he knows that once the kids arrive, once the yeah. half day is over. He's, he's watching it on his, he's watching it on his phone. He's yes. holding it in his hand while they are monopolizing uh, the TV, watching uh, the same show for the, for the million time. Correct. Well, he'll have, like, he'll have it on his, maybe he'll like put, get it on his computer. He'll have it on his lap. But here's the thing. You're never going to be locked in because you're not having the same experience. You're not having the March Madness experience of standing in front of your TV, right? Your brackets on the line. Maybe you placed a bet. You're not going to have that rush when you have like some ridiculous show on in the background of the big screen that you envisioned you were going to be sitting and watching, you're not going to get that rush. It's gone. It's out the door. You're just, you may not even have the volume on. You're probably not even going to have the volume on, man. You're just going to be watching guys play bet. You're not going to know what's going on. And then you're going to check your phone and you get FOMO because guess what? You're not in on it. You're outside of it. Um, anything else there, Joe, before I go to the next uh, tweet? No, I think, uh, you know, you said most of it. Yeah, I, I, sometimes I try to like go, hey, we're going to watch Daddy's show right now. Never. We're going to watch Daddy's show and I try to flip on a sports game and then, you know, no. they they get after it and then, you know, Disney Plus goes on or Netflix uh, or YouTube soon thereafter. So. You maybe have two minutes before they say it's boring I don't or I don't understand what's going on. Like, that's it. It's not even mm -hmm. worth the try. It's like, it's just, it makes you feel even shittier that you thought this could happen. And I mean, even happens. the stuff they like, they, the, the attention span is just not going to be there unless it's one of these shows. Nah. I mean, again, we have two girls, so we had to do the uh, Taylor Swift kind of watch party, you know, yeah, at the I'm house there. a couple of days ago. Um, you know, nighttime, we had the kind of disco ball lights going, playing her, her, her Disney Plus concert. 
and they had fun. They danced around for, for two songs and then and then they were out the door doing something else. And, right. You know, so there's not no way they're going to watch, uh, you know, the Mets game with me <laughs> no. for a half inning. They need to be fully invested in that for that to happen. That's just the only way it actually does happen. The next tweet I have is my, from at my life as dad. So that's the guy's name. So listen, brother, I'm going to let you know right now. I'm shouting you out on this podcast. I'm going to own this space right now. So appreciate you having that Twitter account. Game's up. Game's over. Okay. Nikki's in town now. All right. Sound good. Okay, great. My life has dad, but I appreciate you tweeting this and I'm be ripping a lot of your tweets from your account. Thank you in advance. So he goes, listen, what's real. What's really nice about having kids is that they'd ask you these intriguing questions in the middle of the night. Like if someone dies, would they come back as an animal? Does that happen to you? I feel like they leave the nighttime questions for the things that I have the most trouble answering at times. I don't know. Like my daughter will be like, like, how old is Maui? And I'll be like, I think he's 500. She's like 500. But Super Nona, who's her great grandma, is only 93. She has a long way to go, too. And I'm like, should I just say that Maui's like 50? Like that's like, and then now I'm like, I screwed myself because every night I need to just, and now everyone else that we encounter in life is not older, is not the same age as Maui. And now I have a problem. What about you? You got anything? I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't get those questions. Maybe, maybe mom gets those questions from my oldest. And obviously the two-year-old is kind of my nighttime routine. So I'm really not getting a lot of uh, thought provoking questions right now that come out of kindergarten. Our actual problem at the moment I'm not sure how this is with your daughter. We don't get anything out of her with school. Nothing oh. comes home. She won't tell us a damn thing right now. And what's really funny is that you bring up a boy already and it is like she gets angry. You're like, stop it. Yeah. Don't talk about it. I'm like, who's this guy? Who's Bo? Who's Brad? Who's who's Zach? Right away, gets super shy. It's like, oh my god, what am I going to be walking myself into? You know, down the road at five years old, where she kind of, sort of, maybe has a little bit of like a crush, but doesn't know exactly what that is about. Right. And just knows that dad is embarrassing her, and she hates it. And and I and obviously I know my niece, and my niece is very gifted. She's extremely, extremely smart, and. There is no chance she's not taking stuff in from school and absorbing it. She's so damn smart, people. And I'm telling you right now, she knows that there's certain things she does not want mommy and daddy to know. It's not that she doesn't have it. Have you seen? She, have what? you seen the movie? Um, oh, it's the it's the movie with all the emotions, like joy and anger, and what's that movie called? Elemental. Movie. Not elemental. Elemental's the shit, by the way. I Elemental's love that pretty movie. solid. No, they have that theme good. song. That theme song. Uh, shit, what's the name of it? Their 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 key theme song is like legitimate top. Like it's up there with, like it's up there with the Maui shit. It's up there. But th this movie, it's a it's a Disney Plus movie. I'm blanking on the actual title at the moment. But basically, you're going through like this young girl's life, and she's got all these emotions in her head. And uh, now she's like getting older and older towards the end of the movie. And she like sees a boy for the first time that she kind of likes. She was watching it with me. She paused it, fast forwarded it. Yep. She did not want me even seeing a, a movie scene where a girl she knows like the boy. She second, totally it's like, gets it's like secondhand embarrassment too. Like, like as well, like it's like watching something with your parents that you get in bed. Like when you get like a nudie scene or something like that. And like your parents are in the same room and it's like the most awkward moment ever, ever. Obviously she's not there, but she's at the point where like, she's aware that I'm thinking something and I don't want you guys to know that's, that's a stone cold. Exactly. Cat. Inside um, out is the name of the movie. Yeah. I mean, inside out. Okay. Inside out. Yeah. I mean, these type of questions, I just love them because if you're not a parent, you just don't understand like what it is to talk to not only a kid who have like the same like like they're at a certain age, education level, right? Comprehension. But you're with them every day. They know you like the back of the hand. They she knows that you're going to make fun of her. She knows you're going to tease her. It's like, that's just, it's just incredible how smart they are for their age at times. I went I in just, her room the other day and she had a piece of paper and she wrote mom, dad, and she had her sister's name on it. And my name was crossed off and her sister's name was crossed off. I go, why is my name crossed off? It goes, cause you yell sometimes. Yeah. Why is your sister's name crossed off? Cause she, she gets on my nerves. 
So only only mom was allowed to be with her. Yeah, and she, she probably <laughs> wait. Did she say? Did she give it to you, or did she just put it in like an Easter egg? Like I'm gonna let. No, that it was just there. It just it was just so like she her sent, on her own time. Just no, like, no, no, no. She sent. Saying, I'm gonna she, cross out dad's name. Yeah, she sent. She sent a message. She was Pretty sending much. a message. Um, to close it out, and I thank you, Big Bro, for making this my time pleasure for your, for your little brother. A lot of the stuff behind here, folks, by the way, came from my brother's room. I stole it. That NHL ninety four. I stole it. Um, it's mine now, though. Um, last thing, and this is something that is, you know, you know, I'm big into nostalgia. I'm huge into nostalgia. One of the things that got me most pumped up about having children is that I'm a big kid and I don't want to give like let go of my childhood. And the best way to relive it is through your kid's eyes. So what is the core childhood memory that you have that maybe you haven't or maybe you have that or maybe like you're looking forward to experiencing with your kids down the road that you got planned for them that you're like, man, I really can't wait for to, to do this with them. So let me first say this. When you when you texted me that question, the thing that came to mind was that every weekend for these kids is like a core memory in terms of like so much better than what we had as at our childhood. Oh yeah. You know, like the things they do every <laughs> single weekend, the bouncy houses, the air, you know, the um air places and the trampoline parks and the birthday parties and the Disney princesses. And the it's every single weekend they do things that would have qualified as a core memory for the two of us. My core memory growing up would be like going over grandma's house in Carnarcy, Brooklyn with mom getting dropped off, no toys, nothing to watch it on TV, going into the bathroom, sitting on like the foam, like, toilet seat that she had and like opening up like the Sears catalog and looking through the exact same toys every single time because there was nothing else to do. I don't even remember that. I mean, I'm three years younger. It's a core memory for me, but that was like a weekend for, for you growing up. Or I remember going out in the backyard and like trying to like kill wasps with like a, like a yellow baseball bat. Like that was what we did to, uh, we didn't have phones or technology though. Like we did not have phones or technology. Like, we now can look up every single event like that, right? Like our parents like had a radius and we did not leave that radius right. around us. Like if like that was it, like for me, it's like, I remember mine would be like going to rainbow lanes with dad and him taking me and like doing that tournament that I did. Like mm-hmm. that to me is a major thing. It's like, we went there. He had no, he was like, he, he was like, I want, he's like, I think it'd be fun for you to do this tournament. I didn't ask. I didn't know it existed. I went there and he thought he was going to leave after the first round. I kept him there all day. I finished fifth out of like 200 kids. And like, he was like, man, you know, he's like, I could tell he was like proud of me. Like every round that I was just destroying these other children. Like I felt like he, and plus there was a, I think it was like a $2,000 prize if you won, but Anyway, 16 year old when I was 12, I lost to a girl, by the way. Um, she was a left. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, I mean, like mom will get mad if we ever watch this now because both of us will pick, you know, our core memories with dad. But like for I sure, remember yeah. going to, you know, Shea Stadium when I was like five or six years old, like 1988. And we were sitting on the on the third baseline and uh, Greg Jeffries hit a foul ball. And the woman that was sitting next to us at the game, she knew the Mets third base coach, Sam Palazzo. And she like waved to Sam and he threw the ball and dad caught the ball and gave it to me and that ball was like in like the case in like my bedroom, like my whole childhood. Like that's the core memory. You also love... think dad's like a superhero. Like he caught the ball. He caught my it barehanded. Dad. Like, was I, like he I, just well, I was it. there. I smacked Wasn't it. I there? I don't think was you I were there. there? Cause we took a, no. I don't think you were there. You were try- I think you were too young. Probably. I was probably maybe there. that's, maybe that's what we told you. But uh, anyway, like I would love, I have two girls and who knows you could have sons and they could care less about sports. You could have a girl that's a diehard sports fan. I don't know. I hope one of them is into it enough where I kind of get, bring them to a game and they kind of, you know, that twinkle in their eye and they kind of take interest to it all for whatever the reason. So I hope I get to kind of experience that. That's a little bit selfish on my part too. Cause I want, I want to have someone to kind of go to these games and watch things too. And would love to have that bonding with them. But uh, that w- that would be pretty cool for me. Well, you got a nephew. You got a nephew. You know, I do. I he's, do. He, yep. He's he's he'll be he'll be rolling there and shit. Um, but um, yeah, man. I uh, for I, I think that's something I'm gonna be asking everyone like on this show is like you know what's the core memory that you want to relive again that just like you know makes you feel good or like is really important. Like the fact that you remember the ball. 
right? And that the sentimental value that that ball has is probably insurmountable, you know, yeah. compared to and what's like going to be interesting for, for parents of our generation is that, you know, so much of what these kids do on a daily basis is documented, uh, you know, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Like I find myself sometimes just kind of going through these, you know, highlight videos of things from them, like two or three, four years ago, we're just scrolling down oh, yeah. the phone and kind of reliving them in your head. So like, they're always, there's, I feel like there's so much like you remember, whereas I think when we grew up, you kind of had like, you know, the one set of Kodak film that you would get from the, you know, your mom would get them developed or whatever and bring them home. And those are kind of the memories and the pictures that kind of put you back in those places. And and now it's so accessible and you kind of look at it all the time. It'll be interesting to kind of see if, if certain things kind of stand out or if everything stands out because you have the ability to kind of reach back and, and check it out all the time. Yeah, man. So like if, if, if you're listening to this, you got kids, you had a rough week, you had a rough weekend. If you could tell at the end of it, it's all good, man. We love our kids. We love being parents. You got anything else to say, big bro? Ah, uh, you know, probably not going to watch any of the NCAA tournament most likely. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm just preparing for that. <laughs> you know, maybe that's about it. Looking forward to baseball season, but again, maybe not be able to watch a lot of that anyway. And that's just how it is. And, you know, instead I'll watch a lot of Bluey and, and that's okay. You know, that's yeah. pretty cool in that show too. If you don't, if you don't, well, not, not, not like that Peppa Pig dude, that Peppa Pig dad gets fucking roasted. Make him look like a damn idiot. Yeah, he um, just you know, he works all day and yeah, just pays for holiday. Yeah, absolutely, he's not, he's not the fun one. <laughs> um, but yeah, the good news about the March Madness for us is that if you don't have a bracket, it can't get busted. You know. Um, so anyway, who's, so who's got time to fill out a bracket? I don't. I don't even know. I couldn't tell you who's in what conference. I have no idea what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's it for this week. This is the first one in the books. I had a great time. I appreciate anyone who's listening to this right now and got this far. This is the People's Dad podcast. I'm bringing it to the people. It's for the people, for the moms and dads out there who, you know, you just want that real advice, that real advice from a real dude who's going through it just like you. So please like and subscribe. I'm going to be having a new person every damn week when we talk about our kids, whether they got snot noses or if they're behaving, whatever it may be. Thanks for following along. This was the People's Dad, Nikki the Good, and we will see you soon.